understand a message flow in a large system. And before we start talking about larger system systems, let's look at a, something that is much smaller. So whenever we have a small and simple system, it's very clear what's happening with those messages, right? We have a couple of queues, um, messages flowing between those queues, and it's fairly straightforward, almost color-coded path to those messages to understand what's happening. Now, what happens if the system is growing over the time? Unfortunately, this is what can happen easily. We have a lot of entities, we have a lot of messages flowing, the routes are not necessarily visible, and it's hard to understand uh, not only how messages flow within the system itself, but also what they represent and what they really mean. Same thing could be said about Azure Service Bus, raw Azure Service Bus, when we look at it, for example, on a portal. Here's an example of some system that is running with multiple queues according to the scroll bar on the, on the right side. You can imagine that there's quite a few queues and there's there are quite a few messages, um, but does it really explain what's happening with the system, what exactly we're working on, and looking at individual messages, would it help us to understand the flow in the system and what system is trying to perform? Probably not. What could do that? Well, some sort of message flow where you can see what subsystems are participating in your flow and what are the messages and differentiate between type of messages or type of operations uh, that those perform. To start talking about a particular platform, I will break it into several parts. The first one is N-Service Bus itself. It's the messaging and the workflow core that integrates with the code, the C-sharp code that you write on a daily basis. The next part is more of the tooling for the particular platform. First one is Service Insight, a tool that allows debugging or advanced debugging and visualization of what's happening with the system when you develop it. And the second tool is Service Pulse, which allows to monitor your production system from the message flow perspective once you go into production. Now, what's in Service Bus? It's a messaging and workflow code-based framework to build distributed systems that have certain features. Now, I'd like to highlight the fact that it's a code-based and it's not a uh, server deployed somewhere that, uh, in a central way, allows you to integrate with the existing system. Uh, you download as a NuGet package, and it's part of your code that you unit test, acceptance test, and deploy later in production. So what are the virtues of in-service bus? Simple, reliable, and scalable. Easy to work with and extent if you need to customize, and allows you to focus on the main problems and not necessarily on the middleware. When you don't want to um, solve the problems of the messaging, underlying messaging, but you need to solve the domain problems. Why do I need a service bus? That's probably the question that everyone has on their mind because I can go straight to Azure Service Bus and leverage it as is. A couple of reasons, or a few reasons, I should say. Decoupling, because we know how RPC and WCF worked for us in the past, right? Asynchronous communication to allow your system to be more asynchronous as opposed to uh, synchronous communication. The PubSub, which is a powerful integration pattern that allows you also to decouple between uh, subsystems. And ability to break down monolays or large applications into smaller components or services. Now, when we talk about messages, N-Service Bus has two core message types. One of them is command, another one is event. With command, you normally know the destination. It's a unicast operation. It means that the sender instructs the recipient to perform a certain action that we expect to, have to take place. And it also indicates that the sender has a very good knowledge of the recipient because they probably participate within the same system. With events, it's slightly different. For an event, the publisher of the event doesn't know the destination. It's a broadcast operation or multicast operation. And also, the message that represents events is usually an immutable representation of an event that took place in the past. Therefore, we don't have any expectations other than indicating, hey, something has happened. 
If you would like to respond to it, go ahead. Otherwise, you can ignore it. Also, the difference is that command is processed, a command message is processed by a single endpoint or a single process, where events can be processed by multiple, and we don't know who those multiple processors are, and hence the decoupling. A few more of in-service bus concepts uh, that I would like to bring up is the fact that we have something called endpoint. So endpoint is a logical entity that communicates with other endpoints, right? And we will talk about endpoints um, down the road. Endpoint instances are actually physical deployments of the endpoints and are used for scale out. So for example, if I have um, customer relations endpoint that is responsible for all the logic executed um, in that subdomain, I could have a single running instance or I could have multiple instances. And that's how in service bus scales out. Host is an environment where endpoints are running. So host could be a console application, a web app application, it could be Azure Web App, it could be Azure Service Fabric, it could be Web Job, or anything else. Transport. And service bus is represented by transport and abstraction of the underlying technology to provide messaging capabilities. For this webinar, we will focus on Azure bus as the underlying transport. Next one is handler, which is the smallest unit of code to operate on a message. In other words, the chunk of code, or a small piece of code, I should say, that is running to process any incoming message and can result in outgoing messages or other operations. Handlers are usually stateless. Whenever we're talking about stateful process, we're talking about an source bus concept called Saga, which handles long-running processes. And it's usually associated with stateful process or workflow. Sagas do not perform work themselves. They usually delegate that work to other handlers, which again, the smallest units of code to operate on a single message level. Now, what's an endpoint, right? Again, I said it's endpoint. It's something where we execute uh, the handlers. It's a logical entity that communicates with other endpoints using messages. And usually equates to a process. So every endpoint is a process. It has a unique name. For example, I could have sales service, or I could have a shipping endpoint, or a customer relationship. And that's how they identify, and that's how they communicate with each other. They will contain message handlers, one or more message handlers, based on number of messages that they need to respond to, either process, commands, or event or events, and deployed as a single or multiple instances, right? So this is the scale out. Now, what else endpoint and service bus is doing? It provides implementation of certain messaging patterns that everyone's familiar with. For example, a request reply pattern. Again, this is not request response because request and reply, the, the two endpoints communicating with each other are completely decoupled. It's an asynchronous reply with a queue in between. Another example of a pattern implemented within Service Bus is PubSub pattern, where the publisher publishes an event, raises an event, and in this case, we have two subscribers, each one of them receiving that message and processing. At this point, what I would like to do is switch to a demo. Let me share my screen. All right, so you should be able to see a Visual Studio. And Visual Studio with several projects. In here, we've got, we've got backend endpoint, customer relationship endpoint, or customer relations, and registration endpoint. It looks like the magnifier tool is not collaborating with me, so I'll leave it. With these three endpoints, the first endpoint being the registration endpoint. Let me increase the font a little bit. So with this endpoint, what we've got is a simple console application to demonstrate configuration of an endpoint and service bus endpoint in your code 
starting that point and eventually publishing a simple event. Sorry, um, sending a single command. In this case, the command is create user. So whenever I press a key, enter a key, uh, we will be creating a new command with a new GUID as user ID and send that command. Now notice I'm not specifying where that command is, uh, is going specifically because that is abstracted um, by the configuration, which I'm not going to focus on, but I will show you the basic configuration where we're providing certain things such as uh, audit queues and error queues and serialization, which is not the concern for this demo, so we'll omit at this point. But what I will focus is that the intent of this message to be flown to the backend. So on the backend, I've got a handler which is handling create user command. Once that command is received, we'll mimic in some sort of processing by delaying uh, with a few seconds. And then as a result of the successful processing, I'm going to raise an event or publish an event, user created. That user created will be handled by customer relationship or customer relations endpoint. And within customer relations endpoint, we could be, for example, sending a welcoming email to the new user or something similar to that. So let me execute these three endpoints. In other words, run the system. And again, as a simplistic demo, we have three console windows, right? Each one of them is starting setting up the underlying infrastructure with Azure Service Bus. At the end, we're ready. The registration is going to submit, let me send a request. Here's the request arrived to the backend. The backend finished the work and published the event. That event was handled both by customer relations and also by the registration endpoint, which could, for example, use a technology such as SignalR to propagate back to the user the fact that they were successfully registered or kick off another process. Now, this is great. If I'm going to look at the messages that are flowing through um, Azure Service Bus itself, but will it necessarily discover the intent? Let's have a look at a tool such as Service Insight, which is right here, which shows me the, the messages that are flowing through the system. So it's not necessarily the queues that I'm interested in, and not so, not so much the message, messages themselves as the flow. So you can see that create user has been published from the registration endpoint, and sorry, the command was sent from the registration endpoint and was intended to be processed by backend. Backend has received that message and processed, in our case, within two seconds, which makes sense because we've introduced um, a delay of two seconds to mimic um, the backend processing. As a result of this processing, you will see that we published the same message which went and got handled by two different endpoints, right? The customer relations and the registration. Each one of them successfully processed and didn't emit any other messages. So no more messages in that conversation took place. So that's our ability to leverage and service bus, not only to host the endpoints and, and use Azure Service Bus as the underlying transport, the middleware, but also using um, and service bus and particular platform tools to visualize the message flow. Now let's get back to the presentation. So again, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. That's exactly the picture. That's what we've seen, right? We've seen the subcomponents or subsystems of our system that we built. Uh, we've seen the message flow. We understand exactly what's happening. We see the command versus the events. We know the intent and we understand what was happening. And if any of these messages would be failing processing, we would probably see some red color flashing on the screen. Here's another visualization, in this case of routing, solely routing and not processing, that and service bus is capable of producing. In this case, the intent is to look at slightly different system. This is an e-commerce system online, uh, online sales, where you want to understand the flow of the messages without necessarily the processing. 
And again, uh, and Service Bus, in particular platform, allows you to do this. So you can see where the commands and events are going, how they are processed by all the endpoints, and also you can see that we are now handling a third type of message, which is that asynchronous reply for request reply, which is also taking place. This kind of um, information or visualization is pretty much pure gold for anyone who's stepping into a new or already existing solution to understand message flow. Now, what happens when we have failures? Obviously, we want to resolve those failures and the conditions that contribute to the failures. What are the key components? A, we need to understand what are the errors, right? Uh, what exactly is happening? What's causing the failure? And the second point is how we can actually resolve those. And here we'll look both at end service bus, um, particular platform, and service bus 360. So just quick run, what happens when you use a raw Azure service bus, right, without any tooling? You have a sender, you have a receiver, you have an Azure service bus namespace with the entities, let's say Q in this scenario, right, and the communication between the two. And you need to handle entities management, you have to look into the connectivity, the factors and the clients, the error handling that you know, can be transient or non-transient exceptions. You need, you need to look at the retries and backoffs, serialization issues potentially, um, either it's an issue with the receiving loop or error handling that is user error handling, on and on and on and on. Multitude of various reasons why an endpoint can fail. With an end service bus, um, the error and error handling story is very much simplified. First of all, there is a, an error queue that Answerless Bus introduces, and normally this is a centralized error queue. This is not the dead letter queue that Azure Service Bus provides you by default. Uh, this is an error queue for logical errors. Uh, for example, we try to integrate with third party or we're trying to access database, and those are down. There's no reason to send a message to, to a DLQ or dead letter queue for a failing message that is literally an error, an error within the system. Another aspect of Ensoros Bus is recoverability option. And recoverability is divided into two, immediate and delayed retries. So, for example, immediate retries is something that you would be leveraging when there is an intermittent problem that could be literally resolved by retrying in a tight loop. If that doesn't help, then maybe there's a possibility that the service, let's say, again, go into the third-party integration, the web service is down. And if we retry 10 seconds or 20 seconds or 10 minutes later, that issue will be resolved. And our message will go through rather than going to the error queue. And that's what in service bus is, is doing. Now, the question might be, what happens if I've exhausted my um, retries? Or is there a chance that I will retry many times and the message will end up in Denver queue? Not quite. What a service bus is doing is intelligent retries or intelligent recoverability where we connect it with the delivery account. And the message will never go to the dead letter queue um, unless it's a truly poisonous message. So it will end up in the error queue unless it's a poisonous message and then it's destined to go to the dead letter queue. Unrecoverable exceptions is another example where, for example, we know that when, for example, a third party is throwing a specific exception, that message should no longer be retried. It should be uh, dead letter either, but it shouldn't be attempted to retry again. And Service Bus allows to define unrecoverable exceptions so that the message can be moved to the error queue right after the first failure. Or alternatively, you could provide your custom recoverability policies uh, to be more based on individual message type. And here's an example of a service pulse. That's the second tool from the uh, particular platform that allows you to monitor your production, right? And again, resolving failure conditions. How can we do that? We can, looking at the dashboard, you can identify which endpoints are not emitting any heartbeats. In other words, looking at this screen, I know that there are three endpoints that are down or potentially experiencing connectivity issues and cannot transmit the heartbeats which allows me to go to those endpoints or to the services where those endpoints are hosted and investigate what's happening. The second category is the failing messages. 
So right now I know that there are 50 messages failing in my system and I can go and resolve those, right? And we'll look in the next um, slide how to do that. A third option is custom checks. These are the dependencies that I might introduce and those are uh, verified on a, periodic uh, on a periodic base to see if those dependencies are alive and kicking. For example, let's say I need um, Cosmos DB to be up and running, and I'm saturating, but I need some sort of dependency that is up and running, otherwise my system will uh, malfunction. So I can create my own custom checks to plug into service pulse. Now, let's have a look at resolving failing conditions. For the hard bits, I can go and verify the hosting service. For the failed messages, I can look at the failed messages. And here's another view. In this case, we have over close to 2,000 messages that are failing. What Service Pulse is doing, it allows you to investigate each one message separately, but how realistic it is when you're dealing with thousands, if not hundreds of thousands messages type of scale. In this scenario, what we can do is we can retry our messages as grouped messages. And we can do it, for example, by an exception type. Here you will see that we've got two exception types, null reference exception and division by zero exception. We can take each one of these groups and retry them. Where it's really shiny is, for example, again, going back to that canonical example of third-party integration. Let's say web service went down that I was integrating with. As a result of that, I was receiving uh, all of my messages were failing integration. They ended up in the error queue. So now I, when I know for sure that that sort of, uh, third party service is up and running, I could go back and retry the entire group for the same exception type. And again, this is, helps us to look at the failures, what are the conditions, evaluate if those messages should be even retried or should be archived by bypassing altogether all the retry process and eventually resolve those failures in my system. And this is a quick preview of the next version of the service pulse where not only you will be able to see each endpoint or its instances if it's scaled out endpoint, but also have an indication of what's actually happening. For example, if I look at the payment processor A, I can see that my critical time is going up. And critical time within a service bus is the definition of the time that the, since the message was sent until it's successfully processed. And you can see that gradually that time is increasing, right? We have a stable processing time, which indicates that in terms of processing, nothing has changed, but we can see an increase in retries, which means potentially the failures and the retries that are happening are causing our critical time to go up. So that's a preview. And the next thing that I would like to do is to uh, go to Saravana, who will demonstrate how to handle resolving failures and failing conditions with Service Bus 360. Thanks, Sean. Uh, I think somebody need to pause me the presenter rights. Are you okay now, sir, Vanna? Yeah, I'm okay. I mean, are you able to see my screen, right? Yeah, we um we can see the yeah you need to you need to flip it because you're in notes mode on uh, PowerPoint, yeah. You just flip that. Yeah, it's something good there, mate. All right. Okay, uh, thanks, Sean. Like, uh, I think uh, Sean has gone through some of the capabilities of the uh, uh, service bus uh, uh, at the particular platform. Uh, we are going to extend it with the uh, Service Bus uh, 360. Like, uh, what we have done with uh, Service Bus 360 is to work with the raw Azure Service Bus itself. Uh, in terms of, you know, like uh, handling the dead letter messages, uh, the, the, the way N Service Bus was handling was using a, a dedicated uh, error queue, and they have their own framework to deal with it. But on uh, Service Bus 360 case, uh, we deal with the, the, the default dead letter uh, queues that's available with the each uh, queues and topics, and which is also very critical, like uh, the messages could be dead lettering for uh, n number of uh, reasons. 
some of the, the, the common ones are, you know, like uh, time to live expired. So the queue itself can have some time to live values. And uh, in some cases, you know, the message cannot be delivered within that uh, time to live proper value. It will get dead letter and header size exceeded, uh, max uh, transfer hop count, or some of the other reasons uh, why a message could uh, end up in a, in a dead letter queue. And if you look at you know any messaging uh, based uh, platform, like a dead letter handling is uh, one of the, the most uh, important operational activities what uh, people will end up doing. Uh, because it's a, it, when things goes wrong, you know that becomes your one point of uh, uh, entry uh, to look into uh, whether uh, things are uh, falling or it's, uh, it's all going in the, in the right direction. Uh, with the service with 360, we have uh, quite a bit of uh, capabilities to uh, deal with uh, dead letter messages. One, first of all, you should be able, be able to view what's in the, in the dead letter queues. And uh, you should be able to inspect and see like uh, what are the, the different uh, error messages and what are the descriptions, etc. I'll probably spend more time on the demo that will make uh, life easy. This is just the, the screens that, uh, that cover it. And we also have a very uh, advanced capabilities for uh, resubmitting and deleting messages from dead letter uh, queues. Because it's so important for you to keep that uh, the, your main queue as well as the, the dead letter queue in a in a in a in a very healthy uh, fashion. Uh, okay, let me quickly switch on to the to the demo. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the uh, the Service Bus 360 app itself. Like uh, this, this is the home dashboard with a lot of uh, uh, namespaces registered. So if you work with Azure Service Bus, like you, you work at the namespace level, and you, every namespace can have like uh, different queues and topics, and uh, there's a relay namespace and event hubs namespace, etc. But for today, like uh, let's uh, focus on the uh, mainly on the on the messaging namespace which contains the, the queues and topics. So we already pre-configured a, a name, namespace with all the required parameters. So I'm going to dive into this particular namespace. Okay, you can see there are a lot of queues available in the uh, in this particular namespace. And you can see this order queue with, uh, with the queue length of 57. And there are some active 12 messages and uh, to 45 of them are dead letter. So you can uh, dive into this queue, and uh, you can immediately see like uh, there is a you can you can access all the messages that's uh, available in the in the queue. Uh, you can see the the, the properties and uh, details like uh, uh, the context properties, and uh, you can you actually see the, the the message content as well. So you can see the custom properties, and then the the the, the, the payload uh, that comes with the with the message. I think one of the important thing is this uh, dead letter handling and the deferred dead letter handling. So the dead letter, uh, you can I can go and pick all those uh, messages and see like uh, uh, what are the messages that's in the dead letter. And at the top of the screen, you can see immediately like uh, you know what are the different reasons uh, these messages are dead letter and ended up in this queue. So you can see there are 15 malformed messages, one duplicate message, and three of them failed the maximum uh, transfer hop, etc. So you can, I mean, the same way, like how you are able to uh, peek into the into the message, you can also peek into the into the uh, a, a dead letter uh, as well. So you can see, like, what what is the reason if this one got uh, got into dead letter, and you can see also see the the, the message properties and uh, and message details, like uh, the context and then the real payload uh, payload itself. Uh, one of the the interesting uh, thing here is like. Uh, we have this uh, concept called uh, deferred. So deferred is something very unique to Azure uh, Service Bus. It's a it's a concept uh, you know uh, what a lot of people are not aware of. So once you de uh, defer a message, it gets into a deferred queue. It's a very is a special kind of a virtual virtual queue. So when you're dealing with you know lots and lots of messages, you wanted to a safe way of, of, for you to resubmit it. So hence we're using this uh, concept of uh, deferred. So you, you get to the deferred, and then you know like yeah, the, the the top ten messages or whatever messages you you selected are, are deferred, and once once it's deferred, then you know you'll have the ability for you to 
either uh, resubmit the message or you can you know delete the delete those messages you can select all of them and you can simply say you wanted to resubmit the message and we provide a lot of uh, capabilities like uh, you can either resubmit it back to the same queue or you you may want to push those dead letter messages into a completely different queues for example you may want to push it to you know like a, a, a particular uh, service bus control dot, uh, uh, dot errors queue or or even to a different topic and which in, in turn can kick kick off like a bunch of activities so all these things are uh, are handled uh, with uh, seamlessly like uh, you don't need to do anything it's all it comes out of the box okay let me go back to the the queues and we also have this uh, the analytics capability so you know like uh, it's also important to keep an eye on the health of your uh, dead letter uh, queues so this basically gives you like you know like what are the reasons uh, the messages are getting into 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 dead letter i think we have uh, quite a bit of uh, data in this in this queues and hence it's uh, taking uh, considerable time okay so so you can see like uh, you know you can have a quick peek into like the reasons why your messages are getting dead let dead lettered in the last 24 hours you can see there's a lot of things been dead lettered mainly due to time to live expired because we set up the messages to get into this exception stage but if it's a real system you will see all the different reasons why messages are getting into into dead letter so let me move to uh, uh, another concept called uh, activities so what i have shown with the dead letter is mainly like a, just a manual uh, resubmission of uh, of messages but that's not always uh, uh, possible uh, possible when you have like you know thousands of messages uh, uh, that uh, failed into uh, in, uh, into your dead letter queue so to address that we have an automatic process called uh, activity so you can create a dead letter activity and you can pick up the the queue uh, whatever uh, you know like all those queues in this namespace will be listed automatically so probably let's say like you know whatever key messages in this error queue and you can figure out what is the reason for uh, dead lettering if all the time to live expired exceptions you can pick them up and you can say like uh, you simply wanted to uh, wanted to resubmit it you can also schedule it to run automatically so this basically you know you can have like a scheduled activity that runs say you know like every day at uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning you know like uh, schedule activities at uh, at uh, you know like uh, it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning you you can you can schedule it and you know like uh, the, the activities will automatically be uh, happening and you can save it and you can also you know like uh, uh, come and manually run this uh, scheduled activities so that it clear up all those uh, dead letter messages that 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 uh, that addresses this uh, specific uh, uh, specific scenario so let me uh, jump back into the slides uh, quickly uh, to show you like the, the other important uh, uh, feature what we wanted to show okay i think the way we structured this uh, the whole uh, uh, webinar is basically like uh, we wanted to touch base on lot of the messaging important messaging uh, conditions and uh, uh, and we wanted to show like you know how you deal with certain aspects like a dead letter handling is one of the important things and how you deal with uh, the platforms uh, if you look at the way now like, if you are dealing directly with the azure portal the, the tooling that comes out of uh, uh, azure portal is uh, is very weak and there is no uh, out of the box dead letter handling so hence that's one of the reason why we built it like you know the, the understanding the importance and uh, and uh, speaking to a lot of customers like this is one of the important things where people tend to build their own custom tools and uh, it's not that easy to get the stability and reliability if you wanted to deal with uh, hundreds of thousands of messages that ends up in a dead letter and how you deal with it so the other important aspect uh, we wanted to address with uh, with the webinar is the, the fourth problem uh, what we identify as uh, the importance of uh, uh, the the monitoring and keeping an eye on your health of your uh, your entire uh, queues and uh, queues and topics so there you know like uh, when you have you know, tons of queues and topics like you'll have like uh, the messages constantly flowing through the system and you probably want to keep an eye on whether you know it's a, the messages are in the in the uh, right amount of messages or in the active queues there are not too many messages on the dead letter queue 
So typically what happens is, you know, like it always like a big black box, like, you know, the mailing any middleware or messaging kind of uh, uh, platforms, it, it doesn't get that much attention like any other front end facing applications and people leave it unattended and majority of the time it ends up in, uh, in like uh, most of the disaster happens uh, just because people are not paying uh, too much attention to it. And hence we wanted to build like a robust monitoring uh, platform uh, to handle all the uh, scenarios of what you'd expect from a, from a messaging uh, messaging platform. So let me, I think, uh, better go uh, straight into the into the demonstration, so it's easy to understand. So let me go to the queues, and uh, we, we before going into uh, setting up monitoring for the queues, we have this uh, concept called alarms in Service Bus 360. So you can create an alarm to monitor anything. Let's say it's a, a integration Monday uh, product uh, uh, demo uh, alarm. Let me create an alarm. And uh, we have a type called uh, threshold violation. So as the name suggests, if, if something violates your threshold condition, say for example, you know you are expecting your queue to be not to exceed 100 messages at any one point in time, you can simply set, you know, you can alarm to monitor that so that it will get alerted automatically. And there is a, you know, like a, the, the different conditions, for example, if the, if the violation persists for 10 minutes, so you probably do not want to get uh, alerted immediately. It may be like a, like a floodgate kind of a scenario where you received a flood of messages, but it got it trained up automatically, so you do not want to get alerted. So you can set if the, if the, if the duration of the day above 100 messages stays there for over 10 minutes to alert me. And you can also restrict the number of uh, retries, number of uh, uh, violation alerts you wanted to receive because there is no point you flooding your inboxes or any other notification channel with uh, uh, hundreds of uh, uh, alerts. So you can, uh, you can restrict that completely. Like you can set it to three is the default, but if you want, you can increase that. And this is another interesting thing. Like sometimes, you know, like a um, lot of monitoring products, it will notify you about the problem, but it will not notify you about the, the, about the correction scenario. But here, you, once you check, check this box, it will, it will automatically alert you uh, whether your, uh, your, uh, your exception scenario is being recovered and the system is uh, functioning normally. So we also have a health uh, monitoring alert. Like, uh, like you say, for example, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, like every uh, Monday, uh, Wednesday, you wanted to get a, get a notification whether you know your uh, system is, up, is uh, running as expected or not. You can, you can easily set that one. And we also have something called data monitoring, which uh, I'm not going to showcase today, so I'm just going to uh, leave it uh, as it is. And uh, we also have different notification channels. So email is the default one. You can specify multiple uh, email addresses. And we also have like a different notification channels like Slack, uh, ServiceNow, Microsoft Teams, etc. Maybe I'll choose the, the, the Microsoft Teams one, so which is already pre-registered, and I can configure the alarm. So once the alarm is configured, all I had to do is go to the specific queue or topics, whatever you wanted to uh, monitor. Let's go back to the same uh, orders queue. I pick up the monitoring uh, uh, icon, and you just need to select the, the, the alarm uh, which we created, which basically defined your uh, uh, notification channels and how often you wanted to check and all those kind of things. And I can simply say, like, you know, I wanted to uh, monitor this active message count. And uh, I wanted to monitor the, the dead letter message count, which is uh, which are some of the critical ones. And I also wanted to monitor the size of the, the queue, whether it's exceeding a certain limit, because these are all important because uh, service Azure service bus got a limit of 5 GB, and you don't want to exceed that limit. And you know once you exceed it, you will get into all kind of exceptions happening. So you probably wanted to get alerted as soon as uh, you're reaching that limit. And you can easily change these values as well. Like you can easily say, I wanted to say 5,000 uh, uh, bytes. And you know, like if it's a 50, it's a warning state. If it's a 100, it's a error condition. And you can, you can once you, you're happy, you can, you can save and, uh, uh, and close it. So once you have done that, we are, you know, like uh, the system automatically keeps monitoring it. And you can go to the monitoring dashboard. And you should be able to see like uh, what is the help. So it's already read because uh, some of them violated. And you can see, like, a, you can open up and see active message count is uh, 12, which is greater than our expected value of uh, our, our expected value of 10. And size in bytes is also expected value. I just left it as default. 
so which is way above the the, the current uh, limit and also there's a warning condition and you you can get uh, 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 you 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 will get alerted based on that as well so i also enabled the the teams notification so you can see like if you are using microsoft teams or slack or uh, pager duty or uh, any uh, some of those uh, uh, notification channels you can easily configure it so you can see there's a service bus notification and this is just what I did. I am product demo alarm, uh, and you can see like it's the same, exactly the same thing uh, that comes uh, uh, and displays as a as a as a error condition. So you can see if you have like a like a lot of things going on in the Azure Service Bus, and you want you 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 have the full uh, monitoring capability on top of it. So uh, in fact, like you know, we didn't go through in detail about the platform and what we what it can offer. So we just touch based on two important scenarios, which is required from a messaging perspective. One is the, the dead letter handling and how you can deal with the dead letter messages and also the, the, the monitoring aspect, which we just uh, touch based on, uh, uh, on like uh, some of the important uh, parameters, uh, uh, parameters you, 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 can, you can monitor. Uh, let me go back to the slides and uh, so as you see, like you know, like those are the two important things uh, I wanted to cover. And let me pass it back to Sean, uh, who will uh, continue with the final piece and uh, and wrap it up. And probably we'll spend some time on Q and A so that you can ask any questions. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, could you just advance one slide? I'm going to use your screen to uh, okay. finalize the talk. Yeah. So what we've done is we started. Uh, from understanding the message flow and um, what it takes to resolve failure conditions. And we pretty much came to the conclusion that it's important to understand the urgency and the importance and uh, the impact that those failures have on your system. So again, having a look at the preview version of the particular service polls, um, it is critical not just to look at the underlying messages themselves, but also have a logical representation of the system, um, such as your processes that are running and handling those messages, uh, where the flow is interrupted, um, having the ability to understand um, how many messages are actually going through your system. Is it, um, are, are failures expressed in complete shutdown or is it degradation of the service because potential retries um, or intermittent problems? Is it a connectivity issue or is it the, um, the endpoint itself that is misperforming? All of that information is critical to be captured, to be able to analyze it and alert um, through the monitoring tools that and Service Bus, the particular platform, and Service Bus 360 are providing. And with that, um, we'd like to thank you for joining and switch to Q&A section. Hey, guys. <clears throat>